In my opinion, to me, box arts are among the best. This one isn't different. The front shows the figures and the dog of this set. It makes for high expectations, especially after I did a very positive review just recently. On the short sides we see three of the faces and we can also find the kit number. On one long side we find the origin and the year of release. For somebody like me who loves to build old kits, this set is brand new. Then we have shoulder and collar badges. I talked about the badges and the mistakes Tamiya made in my previous review and here's another one. At least the orange for German MP is correct. Of course minor mistakes like this don't say anything about the quality of the set itself. And here's some special stuff that was only used by German military field police. By the way, these guys weren't soldiers but actually policemen. Most of them were members of Schupo or Kasanierte Polizei. The Wehrmacht actually ordered them and they were sent to the place where they were needed. Then they received their uniforms and gear and the unit got a military name. Here's the German Shepherd. To me I used the pig they had printed on the box of the livestock set a couple of decades ago. I'll tell you more about the dog later. There's a lot to say. Then there are the three holsters we can find in this set. James Bond fans will know the Walter PPK. It was a pistol that was used by German policemen for many, many years. The usual stuff. And this is a very nice detail. I almost overlooked it. ID papers for Wehrmacht and Luftwaffe. Really cool. Here we have the sprues. One for the figures and one for the accessories. From this review on I go through the parts from all sides in a row. Turning the sprue over after looking at the complete front wasn't one of my best ideas. This should make it easier for you to follow. The sprue with the accessories is a standard one that comes with German figures. I like that because there are always many parts you don't need for the set. You just can't have enough spare accessories. It's not like having parts left for two half tanks after the complete build as we know it from one certain manufacturer. The first figure we look at is the Hauptmann we saw in the center of the box illustration. Again a nicely sculpted face. Maybe you want to pause now for a closer look. The eyes are outstanding for a styrene figure. The ears are almost as nice as those of Hornet heads. Not much of a seam line either. I already got used to find a real hairdress on the new Tamiya figures. The captain's body is very well detailed. Belt and buckle are nicely molded. They look very realistic. Again a very faint seam line. Now the collar badges are a bit better to see. The Iron Cross 2 ribbon is really bent around the jacket's label. The way these details are molded is fantastic. They are so crisp that they actually scare me. Take a look at these shoulder badges. I guess it will be worth the money to buy decals for these figures, for example those by Tamiya. Keep in mind that all Waffen SS insignia are removed or blocked out if you buy them in Germany. Well, for this set you won't need them. The back of the uniform jacket looks as nice as the rest. The seams are a detail you don't find very often. The arms come in one piece and that makes perfect sense. The hands couldn't look that real if we'd have to glue them together. In this case the seam line is very important. A pronounced one or even flash would cause a lot of problems. There's not more than that what can't be avoided. The last important thing about the arms will be the fit. I made a rather bad experience with the Masterbox figure quite a while ago. I had to use brutal force to make the one piece arms fit to the body. That wasn't funny so I hope for the famous Tamiya fit in this case. The trousers folds look most natural and the riding boots are nicely done. I missed the loops on top of the shafts. They won't be difficult to add but they were molded on the boots of the field commander set. Just a tiny little thing. Usually we don't find them at all. 
The trousers seams are another nice detail. The seam line on the left leg's front sits in a silly place. It goes right across the button. You want to be extra careful when you remove it. No such issues on the right leg. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but the boots look like leather even before painting them. The officer's cap is simply great. What more could I say about it? Here's the holster for the PPK. An almost invisible seam line. And the locator for the officer's belt. The second figure is the Unterfeldwebel on the left of the box art, the one with the traffic button. And again the eyes have pupils and irises. Except for the Tamir Field Commanders in this set I never saw that on Styrene heads. Faces like this don't leave any room for improvement. For ears and seam line goes what I said about the previous figure. The body is another example of very fine molding. If I said the gorgeous chain is nicely done, it would be an understatement. You know that I butchered Tamiya for the figure several times, but they really improved. That simply can't be denied. You'll see many detailed pics of these arms and hands now. I don't want to distract you with talking too much. Please just look and judge for yourself. I'm speechless. I could repeat what I said about the captain's legs, even the bit about the seam line on the front of his left leg. These seam lines are the only things I could complain about so far, but are they really worth complaining? I don't think so. And here we have the magazine pouch for the MP40. I'm already curious what it'll look like on the figure. It's molded to conform the body's shape, but of course I can't say if it really does up to now. Here's the Obergefreite we can see on the right of the illustration. He's the one who's checking the ID papers. It isn't easy to take close-up pics of small parts like this face. I hope you can make out all the details. The third face we're taking a closer look at and once more it really is a face. The seam line is more pronounced but still not too bad. The ears aren't as detailed as on the previous heads. They'll be covered by the helmet he's wearing. It doesn't matter as long as you don't want to use a cap instead of the helmet. What could I say about the body I haven't said before? I love all these details. The better they are, the easier it is to paint them. For those who are good at painting figures. For the others, including me, there are decals. Let's take a look at arms and hands now. Again we see nicely molded parts. There's also a styrene part for the ID papers, but I guess most of us will use the paper ones you saw at the beginning. This figure's arms are resting on his ammo pouches and so there are locators that will make the assembly easier. Very well done. Maybe I should emphasize that this is a review on a set I purchased. My rather ecstatic comments could make you think I'm reviewing a sponsored kit, but no, my excitement is real. 
The legs are of the same quality as those we saw before. That includes the seam line on his left leg's front. The seam line is a bit more pronounced, but the molding is very nice again. Although there are haversacks on the second sprue, he is one for this figure. I guess the fit will be better. However, it's a very nice looking part. The missing gear is on the sprue with the accessories. I must apologize for the quality of these two pigs. Maybe I didn't care enough about this part because I would use the paper version. Figure D is a lieutenant on the right on the box. There's an elliptic part you could use as a stand for the figure. I guess only few modelers would do that but they'll be used for it. Maybe as a shop sign or whatever comes to mind. This time I tried to take some microscopic photos and I think it worked quite well. Maybe it makes clear why I only use stills for my reviews instead of trying to focus in front of the camera. Something like this would be impossible to do. This is another very nice face. Tamiya, we have a problem. I expect to see only faces like this from now on. Mm, maybe I shouldn't review all the sets anymore. Even resonance would have to be excellent for a visible difference. That says a lot about the molding of these figures. Of course resin hats wouldn't have a seam line and maybe the surface would be smoother, but quite honestly, would that justify buying a set with a price of more than 2 euros for one hat? Only if you're looking for another facial expression. You can save the money for figures that actually need better hats. There are enough of them. I'll leave you alone with the pigs for a while. All I could say has been said before. Ah, there's the difference. The seam line sits in a better place this time. You'll have to choose a holster from the second sprue. Another great figure. If there's a famous Tamiya fit, these chaps will be a pleasure to build. The last figure is a felt gendarme with a dog. And there's another shop sign. I guess you expected to see another great face as much as I did and I'm not disappointed. The body is as good as the previous ones. No need for more extreme close-ups. Uh, except for this one. And now for arms and hands. According to the box art, the gunsling is in his right hand. The duck's leash is in his left. The seam lines are feigned. I don't know what I expected. Somehow I thought that Tamir would have molded holes or slots into his hands. I haven't got a clue if it's possible to do that. Maybe if the hands were slight molded. As I said, high expectations. Nonetheless, both hands look very nice again. 
For the rest, we'll find a solution, just like we always did in do. I can't say anything new about these nicely molded legs. Even the seam line across the bottom is back. And here's the haversack for this figure. As before, the details are crisp. All the other accessories are on the second sprue. Many of you will know that I'm a dog owner and that dogs are my main interest. I also try to use at least one animal in each of my dios. I can't wait to see what Tomia has to offer here, so let's get started. I'm seriously impressed. This is a wonderful head. All features look very realistic. Eyes, nose, lips and tongue are nicely done. I like the fact that the ears come as separate parts. Even the dog's collar is there and it disappears under the longer hair at the front like it would in reality. Here are the ears. They couldn't look that nice if they had been molded to the head. And now for the body. And the reasons why this dog can't be used on a World War II dio. The parts are beautifully done and there's nothing to complain about. It's the body shape that makes it unusable for the era. The sloped back and the shorter rear legs with all the health issues didn't come up before the 1980s. If you don't care for this bit of information, you can use this dog. Many people wouldn't even know or notice it. If the parts fit well, this might be the best styrene dog available. The German Shepherd in the old livestock set looks like it was better suited for the 1940s. It consists of only two parts, but it's got the straight back and the longer rear legs that were the standard at that time. Could it be used? No, it's too small. Three millimeters more height at the shoulder would make it perfect. This size makes it a young dog. Well, that's a pity. Five helmets and haversacks. The haversacks have the same part number, but they all look different. That's nice to have. The helmets have a seam line along the rim. I don't like sprue gates in this place. Why can't they do them on top of the helmets? Five maskets and canteens. I do love extra detailing, but these straps are nice enough. I might change the maskets handle. They look okay, but not excellent.
have cosmos cases and tent packs. For the tent packs go the same as for the haversacks. Same part number, different moldings. Two MP40 magazine pouches, a Luger and a P38 holster. A map case. I can only repeat that the details are nice and crisp. Of course the loops on the backside of the magazine pouches can't be used, but they make clear that the pouches don't hang vertically on the belt. A great help for the assembly. The set provides us with two different entrenching tools. You should check which one to use for early war dios. Then there are two pairs of pouches for rifle ammunition. Two rifles, two daggers, another pair of binoculars and an MP40. I really can't say anything negative about these items. The set contains an MG34 and an MG42. They come with the complete accessories. Look at the details. They're good to go after cleaning them up. These are typical to me instructions. They give us the part numbers as well as the colors we need to paint the figures. Since Tamiya make their own range of paints, these are the only ones mentioned. I use Tamiya acrylics so it doesn't bother me, but for those who use other paints, this isn't helpful. They'd have to use a color conversion chart. The sprue map isn't really necessary to build figures in dark, but it's always nice to have. I like these brief bits of information on the figures and their gear. I guess my opinion on this set came across quite clearly while I talked about the parts. I love them and of all figure sets I have in my stash, the German Field Commander set and this one are the best by far. The details are very crisp and nothing is missing. The seam lines are mostly faint and there is no flash at all. I don't know anything about the fit yet. It's Tamiya, so I guess we have the right to expect perfect fit, but it's too early to say. I bought this set for about 18 euros, so it isn't cheap. Many art sets can usually be bought for less than 10 euros. On the other hand, my reviews on mini art figures weren't really positive so far. If you want to wait until I build the one figure I'll definitely use, you won't have to wait for too long. If you're impatient, you'll have to find out yourself. Just taking the parts into account, I'd recommend the set without reservation, but that's only one half, isn't it? Final words? Yes, of course. To me, I seem to be back at the top with the new figure sets. If they had more courage to release sets with unusual topics, they could easily become first choice for every armor modeler again.